Today's top stories, how high will they go? Prices at the pumps are on the rise. Motorists are angry, but are they angry enough to opt for transit? Speaking of transit, Langley residents have been waiting for years for SkyTrain to reach them. Today, TransLink taps into the communities of Langley and Surrey to find out exactly what they want and how much they'll pay. And Green Shirt Day is April 7th. It will honor Logan Boulay, one of the humble Bronco crash victims who donated his organs to save the lives of others. Welcome to the Langara Voice News Edition. I'm Austin Everett. And I'm Chelsea Liu. As it becomes more expensive to operate vehicles, transit riders might be pleased to see more access to Surrey and Langley. But first, the communities are going to make some tough decisions. Catherine Tinville has the story. TransLink is beginning public consultation for new transit lines in Langley and Surrey. In total, the proposed line will cover 27 kilometers with an expected price of $3.5 billion. The residents of Surrey and Langley will need to make a tough decision about transit in the next three weeks. TransLink is looking to the public to decide what kind of transit they need to connect Surrey and Langley. So we need to know what values and objectives that they want to pursue so that we can analyze it to make sure we have a complete list that we'll provide both to the public and decision makers. And what price they want to spend. The original transit plan shifted when newly elected Mayor Doug McCallum came to office. Now, instead of connecting bus lines, McCallum calls for more Skytrains. With the change in direction as of December last year, the people need to understand, you know, what are we going to do on 104th and King George? Uh, you know, when will that happen? What are the options? The budget passed by the Mayor's Council in 2014 provided $3.5 billion to connect 27 kilometers by light transit. The cancelled LRT line would have run from Surrey to Newton and Guilford. Instead, the proposed SkyTrain runs along the Fraser Highway, but a SkyTrain line will not cover the entire length and will cost almost all of the budget. This leaves about 600000 for rapid bus lines to finish the connection. Residents will have until April 26th to provide their input. For the Langara Voice, I'm Catherine Tyndale. Canada is going green this weekend in support of organ donation. This is the beginning of a campaign to encourage people to sign up and save lives. Jennifer Blake has the story. The first ever Green Shirt Day has been declared for April 7th in honor of Humboldt Bronco Logan Boulay, an organ donor who saved six lives a year ago. His coach and mentor had unfortunately died and um, was an organ donor. So when he heard about that, he, that's prompted the conversation with his father saying, I want to be a donor too. They really wanted to turn this into Logan's legacy. BC Transplant, who manages the province's donor registry, hopes the number of people who donate will increase. You still have people waiting and you still have people dying. And so there's always going to be a need. Donation recipients like Bet Tozan view donors as heroes. One life you save, saves many more lives. You know, we have over 660 people waiting now for a chance of life, a second chance of life. Bet Tausan hopes many people will wear green to raise awareness. Well, I wish everybody gets involved, you know, because like this is a community effort. Green shirts will be available at BC Transplant. For Langara Voice, this is Jennifer Blake. Cyclists are the happiest people on the road right now. If you want to find people who are less pumped, head to a gas station where prices are skyrocketing. Nick Lava has the story. It's a turn for the worse for drivers. Record high gas prices are leaving many drivers feeling drained during fill-ups. Some are even considering breaking up with their cars. Yeah, I might have to sell my car. It's a juicy one. Following Monday's carbon tax increase, lower mainland gas prices keep going up. Even though drivers are frustrated with the high prices, many say they still need their cars. I feel like it's getting very ridiculous, and especially with uh, my family. I have little kids. I have to, you know, like send them to school with my cars. I think I have the option because I need it for work. And if I had the luxury, then I would not do it. City cyclists have some tips for drivers who are out of pocket. My advice is to get a bicycle or car share program and uh, yeah, save yourself some money. This bike mechanic says he supports measures like the carbon tax. I think it's agree like because people need to start to use more alternatives, no more fuel uh, options. For now, numbers at the pump are only going one way. For the Langara Voice, I'm Nick Laba. After the break, we start with campus news. 
Design Formation students get ready to display their final projects. And an update from that arson story earlier this week that forced hundreds of Langara students and staff out of campus buildings. After Monday's arson attack at Langara, UBC students and staff are thinking about what could happen if there was an emergency on their campus. Kristen Trevena reports. Langara students and staff are finishing up the semester here after Monday's fire, which is now confirmed to be an act of arson. 30 minutes away from Langara, students and staff at UBC are having a variety of feelings about the incident, as well as their own campus security. Never have expected it to ever happen, so I don't really expect it to happen here. I really think that like university university should like step up their security just because like it's our safety and it's like safety is super important when it comes to studying at a university. Matt Ramsey, a member of media relations at UBC, says the university has not made any changes to their security procedures and would be surprised if other schools decide to. Despite the scary close call at Lingera, these UBC students do not seem worried about their safety. I assume we have building alarms and, and we do have an emergency alert system going to everyone's phones. I think like walking in at night, for example, is a little bit dodgy, but now they've put in a lot more of those um, systems like, like IDs. Douglas College Head of Security says that incidents like this generally cause schools to revise their own policies and have offered their counseling services to Langara. Despite Langara's T building still being closed off, things look like they are going back to normal as classes are being moved and exams rescheduled. For the Langara Voice, I'm Christian Gervena. If you're looking to check out some creative, innovative designs, you don't have to go far. The final project of Langara's design students are on display right now in the lobby of A Building. The gallery includes items like dresses, building models, and even concept product lines. Feel free to visit before the 18th when it all comes down. A local clothing store is teaming up with Little Mountain Neighborhood House to give back to the community. Front and Company partnered up with the organization for one of its annual rummage sales, with 40% of the proceeds going to the Neighborhood House. This represents the 40 years Little Mountain has been in operation. The clothing store says its rummage sales always bring in lots of bargain hunters. We um, probably will use it for a uh, program that we call physical literacy and nature exploration. It's a sure sign of spring. They're pink, white, and purple. Cherry blossoms are blooming everywhere. Coming up, our reporter Max and Fossey takes us to the colorful Cherry Blossom Festival. 
And could Whole Foods be more affordable in the near future? More on those stories when we come back. Spring has sprung and the cherry blossoms are in full bloom. To celebrate, the Vancouver Park Board kicked off the Cherry Blossom Festival today at Barrar Skytrain Station. Maxim Fossey is there. Cherry blossoms are blooming all over Vancouver. Near the Barrard Skytrain Station, a festival celebrates for early arrival of spring. The Cherry Blossom Festival is a celebration of the arrival of spring in Canada, particularly here in Vancouver, where we have over a billion blossoms of, from 40, 43,000 cherry trees. Mankind, when he makes things, they're not perfect. But a cherry blossom is the ultimate perfection. Reports say that Canada is warming up faster than usual. It is important for people to appreciate nature. We have one planet. Are we going to destroy it? This was Maxim Fossey, Lingara Voice. So Austin, do you think we'll be wearing sweaters or t-shirts this weekend? You know what? I, you know, I don't know. But uh, why don't we check in with Josh and let's see what he has to say. It's a nice day today with a high of 14 degrees and a low of 9. The weather may be warm because spring has sprung early, but we're expected to see some rain over the weekend that will continue through Monday. Now back to you. If you've always wanted to shop at Whole Foods but don't want to spend your whole paycheck, things are going to get cheaper. The upscale market is slashing prices by 20% or more on hundreds of items throughout the store, focusing on fresh produce. This is the third round of price cuts since Whole Foods was bought by Amazon in 2017. In addition, Amazon Prime members will receive an additional 10% off on certain items. Good, good. It's a good thing. It's uh... They joke about it being whole paycheck, and now it won't be whole paycheck anymore. It'll be half my paycheck. Yeah. Well, Chelsea, maybe I'll be able to shop at Whole Foods then. I think you're going to have some healthy options on the rise. Just don't drive there, or you'll end up spending all that money on gas. <laughs> you make a good point. Well, thank you for watching the Langara Voice News. I'm Austin Everett. And I'm Chelsea Liu. Have a good day.